Branch Cache allows us to have a remote office where we can cache files from the main office, say, over a slow VPN tunnel. And the file caching makes it faster for the users to be able to access those particular files. And it can be done in one of two ways. In hosted mode, you're going to have a server in that remote office, and it's going to be cached on that server. The other option is distributed mode, where it's going to be cached on local computers and then opened up from one computer to another as needed. Obviously, the server way is the better of the two, but it does cost more. So what I'm going to do is I'm in server 01, and I'm going to go to add roles and features, and I'm going to add the branch cache server role. So I'll go to next, and then go to server roles, go up to file and storage services, expand file and iSCSI services, and there's my branch cache option for network files. And we also need to install a feature, so we'll click Next, and now we're on Features, and I'll click Branch Cache here as well. Click Next and Install. You'll need to already have shared files and folders, which I have on this particular server. So I'm going to go up to File Explorer, and we can see on server 01, I have a folder called shared, which is shared on the network, and it has the test.txt file listed in that share. Branch cache has been successfully installed. Now I'm going to switch over to the domain controller and set up a group policy object that's going to get pushed out to users. Then those particular users will have branch cache set up so they can open these files and then have them be cached remotely. I'm in the domain controller. I'm going to go up to Tools and go into Active Directory Users and Computers. And I'm going to go and right-click on my domain and choose New Organizational Unit. And I'm just going to call it Branch Cache Users. I'm going to put any users who are going to use branch cache and computers into this location. Now I'm going to go to server 01 into computers and just drag that into branch cache users. So that way my group policy will only affect any one or any device sitting inside this OU. Next, I'm going to go back to server manager, go to tools and group policy management. And here's my branch cache users organizational unit. I'm going to right click and choose to create a GPO in this domain and link it here. Now I've got to give it a name. I'll just call this branch GPO and click OK. And I'll click edit. Next, I'm going to go to computer configuration and I'm going to go to policies, administrative templates, then network on the right hand side, and then landman server. Now I'm going to go to where it says hash publication for branch cache and double click and choose enabled. And we can see that we want to choose the number two allow hash publication for all shared folders. So I'll click OK on that. I'll close the group policy object and the management editor. And I'm going to go back to server 01, where we'll take a look at our share on server 01. I'm on server 01, and I just want to take a look at the properties of my shared folder. So I'm going to go, instead of to the UNC path, which takes us through the network, I'm just going to go to the local drive and right-click and choose Properties. Now here's where you want to make sure that sharing is set up properly. So I'll click on Advanced Sharing. Click permissions, and here's where you want to set up the correct users. Now, by having everyone in there, that opens you up a little bit more to possibly being hacked. So, what you want to do is replace everyone with domain users so that way you can't have anonymous users come in and encrypt your files. So, we'll click remove there and then give full access. Now, we want to lock it down further by going down to security. Now, in security, when you click edit and you choose to add whoever it is that you're going to add, you're going to want to make sure that you have it locked down to specific users and groups that should have access. And what's going to happen is it's going to use the most restrictive between the sharing tab and the security tab. And you can actually use your advanced button to find out what rights they're going to have by going to effective access. Here you'll select a user and a device and then you'll click the button to see the results and then you'll make sure that users don't have too much access or not enough.
Now we need to restart our server01 server so that way our group policy object policy can then be applied. If it was a user policy, then you could apply it by running a GP update command. But since it's a computer policy, it's going to require a restart. And the computer has restarted and I'm logging back in. The next step of setting up branch cache, you can do in multiple different ways. I prefer to use the computer management way, but you can also do this in Server Manager, PowerShell, or even Command Prompt. I'm back in Server Manager. I'm going to click on Tools and choose Computer Management. I'm going to go to where it says Shared Folders and click on Shares, and there's my shared folder. I'm going to right-click on it and choose Properties. And I'm going to click on Offline Settings. And I'm going to go with the default setting that says only the files and programs that users specify are available offline and choose to enable Branch Cache. And click OK and OK again. Now we need to switch back to our group policy object in our domain controller. I'm back in the domain controller, go into Tools and choose Group Policy Management once again. And I'm going to edit our GPO. And once again, I'll go to Policies, Administrative Templates, Network, then Branch Cache. And you can see there's two different types of branch cache that we talked about earlier, distributed as well as hosted. I'm going to assume that you don't have a server in the remote office, so I'm going to enable the distributed mode. Now I'm going to go back in to Server01, restart once again, and then we're going to check our branch cache status. I've restarted Server01 again, and now we're going to open up PowerShell so we can run a couple of commands. I'm going to right click on the Start button and choose Windows PowerShell Admin because it's going to be required in order to get our GP result to work properly. And I'll type GP result forward slash r. If you're not logged in with the administrator, you're only going to see half of the application. You're not going to see the full thing. And when we scroll up, we should see that our branch GPO policy did get applied, and we see that it did. Now we need to do one more command, and that's why we needed PowerShell. And we'll type in get-bc status. And this should give us the information about the branch cache status. And there's a lot of information here, of course. We can see branch cache is enabled is set to true, and it is running. And it will automatically start on the next reboot. And we can check out this information if we add a computer that's going to use branch cache, and you can just make sure that the numbers look correct for you. Once again, the purpose of branch cache is to speed up access to files in a remote office across a slow connection to the main server.